Let's look at an example where we want to do a hypothesis test concerning the population parameter, the mean. Here it says the mean braking distance on a wet pavement for a compact car was reported as 159 feet. The car is now equipped with new tread design tires and were used on 25 tests. The sample mean from these tests was 148 feet with a standard deviation of 23.5 feet. Does this information indicate that the population mean braking distance is reduced? and use a level of significance of alpha equals 0 0.01, or it could also say use a level of significance of 1%. Now looking at this problem, the way I know that they're asking me first the, to do a hypothesis test is because it asks me if the information indicates something about a population mean, the population parameter, the population mean. So they want me to see if I have enough information to indicate something about a population parameter. And the other thing that's helping me understand that I want to do a hypothesis test with it is that not only is it asking me if, I'm in, if it indicates that, but it also talks about um, some information where we're comparing it against some known situation to see if from our sampled information we still have results or we have something that has changed from there. Now because it's a hypothesis test, the first thing I want to do is to set up the null and the alternate hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis is looking at what population parameter that they're asking about. Does this information indicate that the population mean, so the population parameter is mu that they want us to do the hypothesis test with, has been reduced from what it original thing, originally was stated in the reference numbers. But remember, in the null hypothesis, we want to have it equal to whatever. So originally, we had it as a reference number of a mean of 159 feet. So our null is mu equals 159. And it's in our alternate hypothesis that we put the information about how that might have been diff um, changed off of what the parameter is. So here they want me to know if the population mean has been reduced. So we'll say mu is less than 159 feet for our alternate hypothesis. Now we have to stick with the null hypothesis unless we have sufficient evidence from comparing information of our sample information and the um, what we're comparing it against to say that we can reject the null. And only after we can reject the null would we be able to go on and support the claim that's in the alternate. Now because we want to do this with a p-value situation in our comparison, the next thing we'll do is just think about how we might use our references or our tools in order to help us. On a graphing calculator, the TI-83, the TI-84, you would want to go to stat, and then under the stat menu, go to tests. And there'll be a whole bunch of different options there. Tests are for the hypothesis test, but you have to decide which of the options under the hypothesis test to choose. Now we're talking about a hypothesis test about the mean, and when I want to look at a hypothesis test concerning the mean, I have to decide whether I'm going to use a t-test for it or a z-test for it. I'll use a z-test if I have my population um, is standard deviation known and I have a relative number, decent size in my sample. Um, if my population standard deviation is not known and I have to rely on information from the sample standard deviation, then I'll use a t-test. Reading through the information from the sample, they had 25 tests that were done. I had a sample mean of 148 feet from the sample and the sample standard deviation of 23.5 feet. So I don't know the population standard deviation, I only know the sample standard deviation. So I need to use a t-test for this. Now when you look at the t-test options within your graphing calculator, it's going to want you to put in what it has in terms of the null hypothesis, 
So you're going to enter the 159 across from the H0 or mu0. And then it also wants you to enter what information you have in terms of your sample size n. So across from n, you'll put in your 25. You're going to want to enter in the 148 for your x bar and the 23.5 across from your s. And then when it looks at whether you want your less than, greater than, or not equal to as far as the options, you pick the one that is the way that you have written out your inequality in your alternate hypothesis. So you'll highlight the one that gives you the is less than, highlight, and then go down and calculate. And once you calculate that, it'll give you the p-value and on this, the p-value will come out to be 0 0.0139527 in the reported p-value from that um, statistical test that is done with the calculator. Now remember, you want to compare the p-value with the alpha. So I always like to put the p-value on the left and the alpha number on the right. My p-value number from the calculator is 0 0.0139527. My alpha from the statement of the question is 0 0.01. Now you ask yourself, is this smaller than that? Is the p-value smaller than that? So we have our placements of our decimal. The first place that our decimals do not match, I have a bigger number under the p-value than I do the alpha. So the p-value is not smaller than the alpha. So you cannot reject the null. So since you can't reject the null, you say that at a 1% level of significance, The data does not indicate that the mean stopping time or breaking distance has reduced. So at the 1% level of significance, the data does not indicate that the mean breaking distance is reduced. Our data is not significant in this claim.